Guys, welcome back to another episode of OCN Rigs. I got Kelly back with us today in his 2013 Toyota Tundra. What's up, man? What's up, man? Thanks for coming on again. Thanks. Yeah, so 2013 Tundra, tell us about what you did to it. Yeah, it's got a 2003 Northern Light camper on it that we totally gutted and remodeled. Um, all the way down to the fiberglass. There's wow. only a few original things that are still on it, including the shell, the railing up top, okay. and a little box on the side that holds the, uh, the propane tank. Cool, cool. So start to finish, when you found the camper, bought it, what was the timeline for the whole project in terms of getting it here today? It's been about 11 months since I bought it, okay. and about eight months since we've been working on it. Cool, well I've seen photos. It's cool to see it in person, definitely does it justice. I know you've done a ton of work, let's check it out, man. Cool. Let's do it. All right, man, let's talk wheels, tire, suspension. Added a lot of weight with the camper. What were some of the things you did to kind of support that weight? Before we finished up the camper, we totally revamped the suspension. So okay. rebuilt the upper control arms in the front, their Camberg upper control arms. Cool. Installed Fox 2.5 inch uh, reservoir shocks with adjustments on them. Okay. Um, in the back, there's an Icon leaf pack, really stiff leaf pack. And I've also got airbags in the back. Okay. Um, so Firestone airbags with a Daystar cradle below it. Cool, okay. I've got 35 inch KO2s, BFG cool. KO2s on it. And then the, the wheels are method 18 inch 701s. Instead of normally maybe on a Tundra, if you're doing like an off-road build, you might do uh, 17s, but yeah. I did 18s because with a camper, there's something that can happen on the highway called tire sway, where okay. there's just a little bit of flex in the tire and it kind of causes the, the truck to walk a little bit. Okay, well, it looks good and it's functional. Um, talk about some of the equipment along the side here. Yeah, just going from front to back here. This is shore power. This is um, for an auxiliary solar panel. Okay. Uh, this is our propane tank. So we... Um, propane tank this is just a 110 outlet sweet this is a freshwater inlet and as well as city water so you can hook it up right to like a hose awesome. and it'll have water pressure yeah. like that a water heater six okay. gallon water heater and then uh, that's the outlet for the uh, air furnace cool so you're set for the winter in this thing awesome. yeah awesome yeah um, lighting looks like you got some Baja design here too <clears throat> yeah I've got um six s1s all the way around it so um, just some scene lighting cool. really lights up the area around it. So one thing I did want to show you about the back seat, we removed the back seats um, and built a platform for the dogs back here. You know, it's a double cab Tundra, so it's kind of a smaller back seat, but once you remove the actual back seat, there's a ton of room. We've got two big dogs and there's plenty of room for them back here. We've got about 13 inches of space underneath, plenty of space to, to put a big duffel bag or whatever. And then below this blanket, there's a three inch memory foam mattress that kind of holds it in place. Also, we built it um, for the perfect height. You can see it back there where Loki is. When he's laying down, he can look out the window. So that was like a goal. I know you put a lot into the bed with your bed set up. Let's go around the back and check it out. Cool. All right, man. I know you have a drawer system underneath here for some exterior storage. Let's talk about that. Let's pull it open. Great. Sweet. The camper was actually built for a smaller size trucks like Tacomas. Yeah. So the floor of the camper needs to sit up higher so it'll clear the cab of the truck. Okay. So it's on a six inch platform and the platform is actually built out of steel. Uh -huh. So we built this platform out of steel. We bolted it to the, the bed, through, through the bed bolts. Cool. And then we covered it with plywood and then we built these two big drawers. So these drawers are six and a half feet long, super wow. long. Okay. Um, and they're not on slides or anything. You just pull them out and they just stay in place with the tension of the top of the platform. Well, uh, we're at the back. Let's go ahead and hop in. Let's check it out inside. Sweet. Perfect. All right, Kelly, give us the 360 tour of the inside. Looks really cool, man. Sure, yeah. Kind of going left to right here. I've got um, an air furnace, so it's like a 12,000 BTU furnace, propane. Okay. Um, that'll heat this thing up like within nice. a couple minutes, really. Okay. 
below that um i've got a water heater right next to it underneath the kitchen counter okay above that is a two burner propane stove um, with a flip down lid that allows it to be um, counter space when okay. it's not being used next to that i've got a sink all that stuff is dometic yeah so it's a sink with a lid and then you can use it again as counter space Below there is storage, and then there's a lot of kind of piping, so the propane lines and the water lines and things like that it kind of exist below that. Okay. Up above it, we've got cabinetry, and under the cabinet light, we've got a 110 plug, we've got a 12-volt plug, we've got, we've got a remote for the fan, a thermometer, the thermostat for the furnace, a switch pro to control the lights and okay. the water pump, and uh, lastly, the battery monitor. So it'll monitor the uh, batteries and the solar panels on top cool. and kind of let you know what's charging. Uh, moving on, we've got a water heater switch. So you flip that thing and the water heater ignites and heats up water in a few minutes. More cabinetry with some electronics down below at the bottom of the cabinet. Underneath this step that steps up to the bed is our freshwater tank. It's a 20 gallon tank, three lithium battleborne batteries, okay. so 300 amp hours of power, an AC DC converter, a DC to DC charger, which would be charging the camper from the alternator. Okay. We've also got a lot of the wiring, like um, for the solar panels that run into that area. Gotcha. So one thing about this camper is it's really short. So it's like 5'10", maybe six foot inside. Also with the bunk, the bunk is about 6'2", wall to wall. So it's pretty small for a bunk area, especially for two people, mm -hmm. but um, big enough for us. We also replaced all the windows in here. So they're a company called Arctic Turn Overland. Okay. And they flip out. They have a blackout shade, also a screen and they're double pane, so they're insulated. Um, we also did this unique wallpaper. Um, I pretty like cool, that a we lot. found it on. That's sweet. Yeah, it's cool, it's yeah. kind of whimsical. whimsical. Yeah. We found it on Etsy. Cool. Up above that, we've got a pretty powerful Dominic fan called a Fantastic Fan. Okay. Um, and it'll move air pretty good through here. You okay. can stand in the doorway and really like feel the breeze yeah. as it pulls it through. Working our way over here to the right, and we've got a big cabinet. And then below it is a big 110 liter stainless steel fridge okay. from Dometic as well. Up above that, we've got some cabinetry up above this couch here. We did a leather upholstery um, just to kind of a nice give it a nice a little finish too. to it. Yeah. Then we've got this table here that swivels. It swivels out in any direction, up or down. So you can use it kind of as a prep table for our tiny little kitchen here. It also comes all the way apart and stores in this front closet, which is kind of nice because most of the time, honestly, you don't really need a table, especially we're going to use this truck for skiing a lot and cool. things like that. Yeah. So you really want that, you know, seating space and stuff for putting on your boots or whatever. We did engineered hardwood flooring in okay. here. We actually um, originally did some vinyl sheet flooring okay. and after about two months, we could see it kind of getting scarred up pretty quick. So uh, we thought yeah. we'd just um, do a little bit, something a little bit nicer. I've got a company called Featherbuilt. They did most of the craftsmanship on this. Cool. So I helped kind of with the grunt work, tearing things apart, little things that we could do along the way. I designed it and I did a lot of work finding the proper appliances and gotcha. things like that. But Featherbuilt, they're the ones that really did kind of the craftsman details on the project you took a trip already how'd the first trip go with it i'm finding that my truck is getting older it's got like 180,000 miles as, on it as so. they do even toyotas my radiator cracked at the same time my fan clutch went out other than that the truck overall handles it like really well okay. like better than i thought it would okay whenever i see these things i think top heavy especially you know driving down 285 for example you got kind of a, a higher speed limit, but some pretty good corners. How does it do kind of cornering on the highway, at least when you're on paved roads? It does better than I thought it would. Mm -hmm. um, when we adjusted the suspension, we made it really stiff, like almost like a one ton truck, wow. just really stiff. Okay. One thing I do want to put on this is a rear sway bar, but it really handles better than I thought. Well, looks great. Interior is awesome. Look forward to following your travels into the winter, man. It'll thanks, be a fun time. Well, Kelly, thanks for coming out, man. Of course. Awesome truck, quite the undertaking on the project. Good thanks. to see it complete in person. Guys, give them a follow over at Gopher Dirt. They're gonna take this thing 
all over the place in the winter. Stay warm with it as well. Give Featherbill a follow as well. We love supporting those local companies in Colorado. Till next time, we'll see y'all.